We're doing our lives. We're still drawing. Oh my god. <laughs> now, re, 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 Red rum. Red rum. I want alcohol. Wait, I'm already drinking. It's too early. What do you mean it's too early? Mother Dude, it's nine! <laughs> it's not too early to drink. I actually have I actually have to wake up tomorrow at seven because we're running this this marathon. With my the turkey trot. It's the turkey trot. Ah. Excellent. <laughs> the turkey tron. The turkey trot. The turkey trot. trot. This I'm is good. Five miles. I'm not gonna be able to do it. Oh. That's okay. I'll just stay up with y'all until like 3 a.m. Not even care. And then fall asleep on the road. <laughs> yep, pretty much. That's what I do, because I am me. And John, you agree? Text to frame Devo. I am unapologetic. Mags. <laughs> Max, that is brilliant. Because <laughs> I totally thought that was Devo. Really? You should know that Devo would draw a better hand than that. I know he would. But I thought he was just doing it with a mouse because he could. Anyway. <laughs> because he could. Anyways. Um, Thank you. I'll draw so, you hang on. Uh, Cloudy, your character is affiliated with uh, Ha's character, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, Loosely. they're not best friends or anything. Like, they live in the same house but... since they live in the Kingsley? Uh, they did. They did. She moved out, though. They're roomies. They're homies. Yeah, she used to live with them for a little while. And now she's out in a different town trying okay. to find work and stuff. She's, she's trying to build up her career again. Kind of <laughs> Alright. Um... All right, no, no, that's not, 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 get out of here, get out of here. Rachel, that is very inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it into a smiley dick. None of that. Smiley dick? No more? Okay, okay. I'll... No more. It's so no more happy. Dicks. I'm done. It's so happy to see everybody. It's a very oh, happy Oh, that's day. cute. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> All right, guys, keep them down. Wrestle them, wrestle them down. <laughs> well, stay down. Wrestle what? Stay down. Sneaky cup up in your face with your with your cockness. Their cockness. Sneaky, sneaky cock. Sneaky, sneaky. You know, in your sneaky. face. All up they hide, they come up in your face. Sneaky, <coughs> sneaky cock. Do I hear music? It's creepy. <gasps> music. Open music. Ghost <laughs> waves by dark ambience playing. Ooh, is it, it is a frighten. I am a frighten. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> How do you it? hear the music? I, just it, I don't know. I just hear it. I don't hear it. I hear it. Go to your, uh, from, uh, the Roll20 oh. site. Oh, oh, I'm hearing it now. I'm hearing it now. Yeah, I can play music from here, but it's just, it's very, very light. Well, that's what I want it to be. I want it to be ambience okay. more than anything else. Unless it just suddenly gets louder, and then I'll just start laughing about it. But, um... Yes. So you just so uh, your character is uh, Sabrina. Uh, walk me through a day in the life of Sabrina right now, in the current way that she's living. Um, well, she's living off of her savings right now, and she's basically trying to go out and talk to people and get some inspiration for a story. Okay. Because after her accident, she kind of lost track of herself, really. <laughs> what she wants to write about. Oh god. <laughs> okay. Um You've been getting a lot of help from uh you've been getting a lot of help from a let me see what his name gonna be. You've been getting a lot of help from a uh, a nice guy named uh, Jacob. Um, he's been. Oh, that's weird. That's my brother's name. Oh. <laughs> You've been getting a lot of help from uh, her, her brother. Um. <laughs> uh, so you've been working with a man named Jacob. He's been kind of there for you. Uh, after your after your accident, he was the guy who uh 
he was the guy who found you in your accident and got you out of your car and took you to the hospital. Ever since, he's kind of been with you and just sort of a helping hand. He, do he doesn't interfere too much with your life. He kind of just shows up, checks on how you're doing. And at times you do wonder, why does he spend so much time and, uh, you know, doing this? I'm sure he has a, you're, you're pretty sure that he has a life to live, but he always seems to make some time to visit and see how you're doing, especially since he noticed uh, that you were pretty much all alone. Uh, you didn't have family with your grandmother dead. Um, so Jacob has more than anything been, uh, been a brother to you. Um, one day Jacob calls you in and says, Hey, uh, Sabrina, I've got I've got some uh, good news. I heard you were working on writing a book, right? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, what what kind of book are you trying to write about? Just you know, just so I I got my facts straight. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to write about people and their lives. Write about people and their lives. You got any good leads? Any interesting inspirational uh, sources or anything like that? <laughs> I'm still looking right now. I'm trying to find some inspiration. All right, all right. Um, does your character remember that she was Devin Blake? Uh, she does, yes. Okay. Your character doesn't remember what led up to the car accident, the moments that led up to the car accident, and doesn't remember much about when her grandmother died. She just knows that she died at some point. Um, yeah. As far as your relations with the with the Kingsley family, uh, you you heard word. I mean, people talk, especially coming from that town. People talk. They heard that Noel got uh, picked up by some people uh, and taken to Los Angeles, uh, into the big city. No one really knows why or what the, uh, for what job. She was very secretive about it, but um, they know that she's, well, gone. And uh, Mr. Kingsley has been uh, continuing to do what he does, working hard uh, in town. Um, so at this point, um, Jacob seems to have you know paused for a good long while before saying, "Do you have a publisher?" I haven't been able to um, build up my connections yet, but it'll probably work out eventually. I just gotta keep trying. Well, that's the good news then. So I ended up find I, I had a friend that I was talking to, and I just ran into a couple of days ago, and I remembered that you were writing a book. So I talked to I talked to her, and uh, she said she'd be very interested in seeing uh, any work that you have at all, uh, just to get a good feel and see whether or not you're going to be someone who could uh, someone that would be worth putting some money behind. Um, if you want, I can arrange for a day for you to meet if you if you'd like. You know, unless you've got other plans uh, for this weekend. Uh, not really. I mean, sounds great. Uh... And then he kind of jumps. Uh, he jumps to that and uh, and says, "Well, that's great, great, great. Uh, so I'll tell you what. I'll pick you up over uh, at your new place. Um, yeah, three o'clock this Saturday. Then we'll go out and talk to the publisher. Sound good? Is there anything specific she's looking for, or just any writing? Or are they just okay? Great." I'll put some stuff together. All right. So the rest of the week passes. Do you does your character have uh, any writings that they want to try and you know work on? Um, she's got a, a lot of stuff that she's scrapped. I mean, she's really down the dumps when it comes to creativity right now. So she, I think she would be panicking at the moment. All right. Um, so you get you get together what you can. You get a bunch of your scraps together and uh, decide to make the best of it and organize it all uh, throughout the week until Saturday finally arrives. You find it really hard to sleep that night just from all the nervousness, and uh, you wake up in the morning exhausted. But you care. Uh, it it doesn't take too long before you hear a knock on the door. Okay, 
so I answer the door, I guess. You go over, open up, the, uh, you know, answer the door, ask who it is, and you find that it's, uh, you find that it is, um, Jacob. He's there, on time, as he said he would be. Um, alright, gonna pop out of the, gonna pop out of in character and, uh, talk a little bit about your character sheet, since I'm now going over it a little bit more. Um, one thing I would suggest you do is switch out some of your points and put it into expression. Expression is, uh, your writing skill. Expression. Expression is art. Huh? Uh, it's under social. Expression is the ability to create art. Or to express oneself. So I'll let you rearrange your points uh, in that regard as far as, far as you need to. Uh, because you're going to need it uh, if you're going to be a writer. Uh, mm -hmm. So that being said, just go ahead and take the next few minutes to uh, situate your points. And let me know how when you're good to go. Okay, I'll just do And I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna go put this mug away. I'm back. Did you get your point? Uh, did okay. you get your point situation uh, figured out? Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm I'm uploading it now. You don't need to. Uh, you don't need to worry about showing me that bit. Just uh, keep that. Uh, just keep that to yourself, and I'll trust you uh, that you didn't cheat your cheat the system. That's all. Now. She's cheating. <laughs> so yeah, I I have uh, I have twelve dice to roll for my writing skill. <laughs> Okay, so your character. Uh, so, okay. Um, actually, let me check my lecture to make sure that sounds coming through. I just thought about that. That would be bad if sound wasn't coming through. Okay, sound is coming through. All right, good. Now, uh, Jacob, he, he says, "Great, great. Uh, you got your stuff." And you know, Jacob has always been more of an—he's uh, a very eclectic personality. He's always—he's also very uh, enthusiastic about a lot of the things that he does, um, especially when you know he—he's been helping you out with getting your life back together. So you get you kind of have gotten to know him and um he is uh he's the kind of person that will he'll nag you in a good way to get things to get things done and he's always the kind of checklist kind of a person is one thing that you notice he's very organized about everything that he does uh almost to a very concerning degree it's almost like he has everything planned out for the next three days all the time. It's like when you meet someone who can look at you and almost plan way too many steps ahead and you never want to play chess with someone like that. 
he, he you know, he goes through and says, all right, uh, good, good, uh, everything seems to be in order, you got your stuff, um, make sure you don't forget your, uh, make sure you don't forget your breakfast, uh, which he points out, and it, once again, he's right, you have most of your breakfast sitting on the table because, well, you were in a rush and you were panicked, and it's now, like, 2.30 and you've forgotten about it, uh, as you gathered up your last minute stuff. It almost looks like he knew a uh, little, it, it, you've gotten used to it by now. He never seems to mean anything else by it other than he's just very, he's a very observing kind of person. Now, um, you guys both get in the car, uh, he's driving. <laughs> Uh, especially since you know he's the one inviting you to come along with and meet it and meet this friend of his, and uh, he says this is going to be a bit of a drive. So go ahead and relax. You look exhausted. I know that you probably haven't slept for a couple of days, so just take a breather, relax a little bit. It's going. We're we're driving out to L.A. You get to, uh, you, usually you, you do a good job of listening and he, and eventually you start to pass out, but it's not too, it's not too long before you suddenly, uh, awake again. You know, that kind of feeling when you're in the car, you've knocked out and then you wake up right before you get home. Kind of like that, except you find yourself waking up as you're now in Los Angeles. It is about five in the afternoon, the sun's already beginning to set. And, um, you guys are both in a, uh, you guys are both in, in this large sort of food court complex type of area. So you go out, he walks you over, and, uh, flags down, uh, gets flagged down by a, by a lady in a business suit. Very nice lady. Um, she seems to be, uh, when you see her, I need you to make a perception check. That is your wits plus composure. Wits plus composure. Yes. Oh. Add up the number of dots you have and roll that many dice. That's six. Yep. So oh. roll six d10s. Okay. Um, oops. I am going to attempt to order a pizza. Six d four, right? Pizza. Yes. Six d10. Pizza. 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 Six D ten. Yes. So six ten sided dice. Okay. I got twenty seven. Uh, we count. We look at each of the dice individually, and if they are above eight, they succeed. Okay. Uh, so that means you have no successes. So you don't pick up any. You don't. You know something's off, but you don't know what. Okay. And when you sit down, you. Do notice there's a slight, there's this slight scent of flowers, like you're standing in a garden, yet you're in the middle of lost fucking Angeles. And you feel very calm, relaxed. You feel great. Especially when you're sitting in front of this person who you've been panicked about meeting for the longest time, and she just sits there and pleasantly smiles at you. It's one of those smiles that's just... You can't not look at her. And when she speaks, you give 100% of your attention to her. Nothing else in the, mo in the world mattered at that point when she speaks. And all she said was, Hello, it's nice to meet you. And she extends her hand. Uh, okay, so I guess I shake her hand. It's nice to meet her too. Thanks for seeing me today. And uh, for a moment, she she nods and smiles, and then takes her hand back before remembering. Oh, my my apologies. My name is Diane. I've heard a lot about you, uh, Sabrina, from from Jacob over here. He's been so kind as to inform me on uh, your writing, and I work with a publishing company. I'm very interested in seeing a little bit more of your work. If you happen to have any, that would be fantastic. Okay. Roll a willpower, uh, by the way. 
Oh, willpower. So take all the dice uh, that you have in willpower and roll that. While I order this pizza. Give me pizza! <laughs> I'm sorry to get Whipped cream pouring like waterfalls! God damn it! What does that even mean? <laughs> You're pouring whipped cream like waterfalls. I am literally going to cry, Del. Song? I don't know the song. That fucking song. Alright. Roll, re-roll 1d10 for the 10 sided, for getting a 10. Are you ready to play? <laughs> God damn, roll again. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what the hell is that? Oh. Alright, 1, 2, four. Okay, so you got four successes. Just, just, yes. nice. At this point, yeah. at this point Wait, when... Uh, Hang on one second. Let me look at this. So you got four successes, which is pretty fucking good. At this point, you kind of blink, and you, know, you close your eyes for a moment. You feel lightheaded. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, that was an accident. No problem, no problem. You feel lightheaded. You take a moment to breathe, and then you look back at her. And you, uh, what do you go and what do you say when she asks you to give her your work? Um, I, I tell her that I have one idea in mind, and I've got some some notes of what I want to do, and. But I guess I hand that to her, and the story is basically to interview um, patients who have undergone trauma from accidents. She takes your, she takes the paper and she starts, she reads it over. You don't know why, but there's just something you can't stop thinking of. How you want to compliment this person? You can't stop thinking about how you want to flatter this person. Uh, one second. You're not entirely sure why. But you're able to resist yourself um, and focus instead on why you feel so lightheaded right now. What do you decide to do as she sits there very quietly and goes through and reads? Well, <clears throat> I try to get a hold of myself. I mean, I want, I mean, if this is an important day possibly get some work. I really want to be my best, and I want to be able to think clearly. It must just be my nerves, you know? I need to calm down and take deep breaths. <laughs> okay, um... So... At this point, she after she finishes reading, she um, says, um, would it be all right if I hung on to these for a little bit, and I'll get back to you very soon? Um, for now, let's let's just focus on uh, enjoying dinner. At which point, apparently Jacob already went ahead and ordered for you. He knows what you like, and he knows what to order. Uh, so he went ahead and got the food for you. Uh, he is a bit, as I said, he knows a bit too much sometimes. Jacob. Jacob, please. Uh, and by then, your food has already arrived, and it takes a few moments for the waiter to go away. As he keeps trying to talk more to, uh, to Diane. <laughs> you go through, you finish eating, um... And uh, but this whole time, she's been very quiet and has been reading your uh, your works. Uh, and you're not sure if she just reads very slowly or if she's really taking a lot of time. Uh, which she goes through and uh, she goes through and takes jots down a few notes on the side on her own notepad as she looks over your work. And eventually, 
uh, I mean, at this point, you don't even really think too hard about how nervous you are, or the fact that you're technically being interviewed. Um, Jacob is kind of the one who's, you know, continues talking to you even though you just kind of nod your head and say, yeah, mm-hmm, yep. And before you know it, dinner's over and she says, thank you very much for your time. I will go ahead and, uh, I'll go ahead and take my leave now and I bid you a good night. I'll get these papers back to you as soon as possible. At which point, Jake? Huh? Right. What do you oh, want? No, no, go on, go on. <laughs> what do you want to respond with? Oh, well, nothing really. I'm just like I think that Sabrina would probably be a little bit nervous to let her work go, but you know, she wants she wants a chance at um, making some money and doing a story, so she wouldn't really have any objections. And then she says, uh, if you give me a moment, I need to borrow Jacob for a little bit. Jacob gets up, walks over, and they go near the fountain as they leave you sitting there and in your seat. Um, at this point, make another perception check. And that, right, that's 60. Yep. I think I want a Hawaiian luau pizza. That sounds fucking good. Does it come with Canadian bacon? I uh, fucking better not, or I'm going to Canadian fucking kill bacon? a nigga. That sounds I will. like something that would come with the Canadian bacon, man. I would yeah, kill a nigga. I would never Hawaiian pizzas. It has Canadian. It has Canadian bacon on it. Filth. Canadian. I will not accept Canadian. this. Canadian. 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 Canadia? No, he, All the he sits on the Canadian. Canadian bacon, and then he's like, mm, I want to order a pizza. I think I'll just get the wow with the Canadian bacon, even though I say that. Nope. Bacon. Now, I have completely passed by the Canadian bacon now. Now that I am aware, because I looked at the picture and saw it, it was indeed Canadian bacon. Canadian bacon. Oh, God. Secretly Canadian ordered. Bacon. It's just great. It's nothing it Fucking it. refuse. I'm going to go ahead and get the Italian trio. Yeah, Italian trio. Yeah. Right, right. That's what you say you're doing. I want your pizza cut into squares. Have another request. I want it cut. I want it cut in the shape of a giant spiral. Or worse, <laughs> I I want. <laughs> you know, you know. Here's a fun request. Ask them to write you a love poem. Yeah, I do that. That is. I've done it before. Creepy. It was really funny. And I feel bad for the person that has to do it. Order your pizza with extra cheese. No. Transy uh, ordered a pizza from you once, and she, uh, she requested made, that yeah. it was a bad joke. <laughs> 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 I like uh, uh, yeah, order this joke. pizza. I decided on your order. Uh, check out. Fifteen fucking dollars? Delivery so charge, delivery tip not included. That's Driver's tip not included? Christ, that's an expensive ass pizza. Fuck that noise. Yeah, that's right. We delivery people have to work hard to drive the food to your house. Well, no, no, I, I'm not saying anything on that. It's just I, I was not expecting it to be fifteen fucking dollars for the Rax pizza. Rax, that is a fucking expensive pizza. I will agree with you. <laughs> Rax, so anything over eight is a success, right? Is what you're yes. Saying? One, two, okay. three. Right. You got three successes. Uh, as you notice that there's a, you shut the fuck up. I will kill you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought that was Dell. Never mind. No, it was me. It was me <laughs> drinking was me. my pop. And it was me just making pop. slurping noises. Your pop. My pop. My pop. My parents. God damn it. Iowa. Shut up. Dell, <laughs> shut up. I kill you, nigga. <laughs> Rude. Rudest. Rude. Control yourself, everyone. Never. Alright. Fine. Be that way. Y'all make it with me. Okay, so, um. You notice that there's a strange looking man. He looks fairly average, and that's probably the most unsettling part of him is he just looks so average. He walks up and, you know, he slides a paper onto your table. Naturally, it's for you. And then he just keeps walking. Mm. Mm. What do you do? <clears throat> well. I, 
I look at Jacob and Diane first. They're too busy talking right now, and um. <laughs> It's just, uh, I... they're not paying, she's not paying, uh, she's not paying attention to your general area, and neither does Jacob. He doesn't seem to notice. <clears throat> okay, well, I guess I, I pull it, um, I grab it, and I kind of hold it under the table. I don't want to look weird. I kind of glance over it. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. <laughs> what? The icon hasn't changed for me. Wait a minute. Guys, you have to stop laughing. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Shh, just, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> no taco, no one's good. It's okay. You be yourself. No friends here. I accept you. Accept you. Yourself. Okay. Um. You hold it on the table and take a look at it. When you see it, um, the paper simply says they're hiding something from you. And that's all it says. Oh. Written on the back of a receipt. Okay then. Uh, guess I tuck it into my pocket. That's kind of weird, you know. But I'm not really sure what to say about that. Um, if you when you, when you try to look for the guy, you know, look around and see where he is. Uh, he's gone. I guess I look back to Diane and Jacob. At this point, Diane has already, you know, said her bye to Jacob, who walks back and says, "All right, so sorry about that. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, head back home. All right." Hmm. I, I guess I get up and say, "Okay." Still a bit I ask him how 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 does he know Diane? Like are they friends? Or trying to get some information about her? Uh we met in college. College man. College got a party over. <laughs> we met in college. He leaves it at that. Um I don't want the fucking pizza. I have a bunch of food at home. I could just make something for my fucking self. <laughs> I decided against it. The alcohol is starting to fade, and has it has deemed pizza unworthy. <laughs> Go get some corn dogs. I've got bacon. <laughs> I've got like I've got like three pounds of bacon <laughs> in my fridge. I I don't even know why the thought. Wait, what happened to your diet? <laughs> uh, so I already lost like ten pounds, so I'm allowed to do this. It's Thanksgiving weekend. Nice. Yay! Yeah. All I've been doing is just drink. Oh yeah, <laughs> twenty pounds, baby. <laughs> All right. So uh, as you're driving back, um, throughout the car ride, it seems oddly quiet. Jacob's usually he. You can't get Jacob to shut up. The guy literally will just talk just to hear the sound of his own voice at times. Like my brother. <laughs> but Jacob. he's oddly quiet this time. And to a degree that kind of unsettles you. Especially since now you're awake and driving back, you kind of don't know where he's going. Um, until finally he, like, you uh, make a perception check actually. I think that would be for the best. Oh, three tens. Shit. 
Shit. Shit. Shit. Shit. Shit. She got too good. Do I roll? Too strong. Too strong. Oh, okay, so I need to roll three more times then? Wow. Yes. Holy shit. Jesus Christ, Cloudy. Hey, you're not one to talk. What? Yeah, Meg. What? Yeah, I remember you rolled so many times. No. Didn't Dell get like what? seven in a row? You, you, you and Dell. I have the rec- I have the record, it's seven. I thought it was six. Nope, it's seven. I got seven. Oh my god. Okay, so, um... Still too good for this world. Norse, that is awesome, and I'm totally going to na Now I'm thinking about it. I really want to make that cake. I really want to make that fucking cake. No rats. No. <laughs> I thought you were just going to eat the powder. Bacon. Well, I was thinking about that, but then the better half Save of me came out. Hi, from underneath the, uh, dude, when I go to Thanksgiving, I'm literally gonna be at a, my Vietnamese relative's house, and I already got food poisoning twice from that bitch. I am, I am literally nice. going to try and eat oh, wow. as much as I can before I get there, because fuck that house. <laughs> I never got food poisoning until I had her food. So I am, I am, <laughs> like, every time she cooks, I refuse to eat any of it. Wait, did Ha destroy this? Maybe? I don't know. Ask her. Now, um, your your successes allow you to notice that he's behind the you know behind his glasses. He kind of he tries to play it off and he looks aside, but you're noticing that he's looking at the rearview mirror a lot. And when you turn around, you notice that there's a car following you on a very lonely stretch of road. No one else is around. Uh, until you guys get near a bridge, at which point. He slows down. Until finally you're under the bridge where he pulls over. Mm, I don't like this. What you see behind you is a, a truck. A rather large truck. You see several men step outside of the outside of the vehicle. One of them being the very, you know, average looking guy. You also notice that they're carrying weapons and what look like ropes. Oh. Eh. Uh. Fail. Out. Uh, what do you do? Dude, Jacob, <laughs> let's get out of here. This, this looks really dangerous. What's going on? Jacob nods his head forward and uh, show. And at this point, you know, you look ahead and you see that there's another car coming on the other side. You, there's no way you could really escape from this. And Jacob steps right. out of the vehicle. Oh, you notice that the two. He he closes the door. And, you know, he keeps the window closed uh, as he walks towards the man. And the other car pulls up in front and makes sure to block your path. So you can't step on the gas and get out of here. Any, for Not without seriously risking something. Um, you notice that Jacob and the man who's in charge, it seems, are exchanging words. They talk and Jacob kind of like throws his hands up. And he, he throws his hands up like almost like he's being threatened at this point, which you notice he is being threatened um, with a shotgun towards his belly. Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. You notice that several the, uh, out of the vehicle to your front, several men are now getting out of the car and they are a lot more heavily equipped. And they come over to the, your, your side of the vehicle and knock on your window. I I roll down the window. I mean, they've got guns. If they want to get in here, they can. I don't want to piss them off, so... He says... I'd better be talk to talk to them. He leans down and says, Lady, you better get out of the car. Okay. He steps oh. back. <laughs> gives you room to get out. Alright. I get out of the car. At this point, you hear... 
Uh, you hear a gun going off. Oh, fuck. And you turn back to see where the noise came from and see Jacob has fallen to the ground. Oh, oh. shit. And you turn back around mm -hmm. and are hit, the, are hit in the side of the head with a sap. Knocked out. Oh, fuck. You don't know how long you were asleep. But you wake up tied to a chair with a bag over your head. It's dark. And judging from the way that you're moving around sounds, you're in a room of some kind, a very, uh, a rather small room. Make a perception check. successes. Oh, and a ten. So I need to roll again. Yep. Jesus. Okay. So two stops. You. It takes you a few moments to calm yourself down after remembering. Uh, after remembering what all just happened. And you hear bootsteps coming down the hall oh. until you hear the sound of something being unlocked door and the door being open you hear a man walk inside you hear someone who sounds like a man at least walk inside uh, judging from the way that he's uh, kind of muttering to himself over some paperwork you can hear that moving around and from what you can tell there's a table in front of you as he puts the papers down he walks around the table and pulls the bag off of your head. And the light is blinding at first. You can't see anything outside of that light. He sits down in front of you. Once again, the light's too bright for you to really get a good read on his face. You see him lean back in his chair. thinking um, as uh, you look over the papers that are in front of you and you see pictures of your car accident that you had you can tell because well you're in a, a lot of them bloodied broken uh, your vehicle a mess you're, you still don't know how you got out of it how you're even alive right now and this reinforces that question the man asks you tell me what happened to remember the events that led up to this particular moment do you as he points at the pictures sliding one of the pictures forward Why, why do you have my pictures? Why am I here? I think you should just answer the questions. That would be a little bit easier to work with. So. No, I don't remember. Hmm? No, and he just lets you talk. I don't remember what happened. Why do you need to know? Why is it important? It's a car accident. You watch as he pulls out um, a knife and sets it on the table and says, I'm the one asking the questions here. He gives you a few moments to understand your situation. And it's clear that I, I think the statement at this point is fairly clear. He takes in a deep breath, looks up, and as he thinks about his next questions, what do you know about uh, the gentleman who was with you in the vehicle? Uh, 
he was an acquaintance. He was trying to help me get my career back on track. What um, do you know what his name is? Jacob. Really? And you're sure you don't remember what led up to the events that caused your... And he brings his fingers up and does the uh, quotation marks. Do you really uh, remember uh, the accident? I remember waking up in a hospital bed. That's all. At this point, you see him uh, open up the folder into a second part of that folder, which shows pictures of your grandmother. And he says, Do you remember what happened to your grandmother? She... She was old. She was sick. Alright. Old and sick. Let me guess, you don't remember that either. Just stare at him. Take that as a yes. Well, Miss Sabrina, the man that you were with, his name, for starters, is not Jacob. For now, all we know him as is Jax. <laughs> Sorry, I left. He has been keeping an eye on you because, turns out, your accident was not really an accident. You just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Why Jax is there and keeping an eye on you, we have no idea. Not yet, anyway. But we do plan to find out. At this point, make a perception check again. As he pauses, almost on a point. Oh, a ten. Uh, oh, it's so hot! It's here. Hello. Creeper. <laughs> okay, so I have. Two you hear the sound of someone three, screaming. Three you hear the sound of some someone screaming. It sounds very much like Jacob or Jax or whatever the fuck his name is. They really are gonna find out, huh? <laughs> he says, "We don't have any intention of causing you unnecessary harm, Miss Sabrina." I suppose after you have courteously attempted to answer some of our questions. I'd like to, uh... I'd like to give you the opportunity to hear a couple of answers. So please, ask questions one at a time, though. What are you doing? What are you doing to Jacob or Dax or whatever? He Are you hurting him? I mean, he's trying to help me. Why are you why are you doing this? One at a time. First. He's being interrogated. And the way he puts emphasis on interrogated it's on the nastier side of interrogation. 
You see, Jax is an enemy of the state. More than that, he is an enemy to he's an enemy to a large number of countries. Your friend Jax is a criminal, to say the least. A terrorist is a much more accurate statement. And we intend to find out why he was helping you. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and continue asking your questions if you want. Bottom. What what do you want from me? I don't know anything about him. You may not know anything about him, but we are fairly certain that you will eventually come to remember the events that led up to your car accident, the events that led up to your grandmother's death, uh, or more accurately, her murder. What led up to why your parents aren't around? What are, you, what are you suggesting here? We're suggesting that you may know a bit too much. And we're going to keep you here for a little bit until we can ensure that the secrets that you know remain secrets. Once again, we don't wish to cause you any unnecessary harm. We simply want to ensure our country is going to remain safe and that certain bits of knowledge are not released to the public. We also are aware that you are an aspiring writer. We acquired these and you see fold you see the folder that you prepared for uh, Diane put on the table and it's covered in blood. Did you kill her? Once again. And he just holds up his hand and says that's not necessary to answer. All you need to know is that this is for the good of the nation. We don't want to hurt you. We're going we're going to we're going to put you in a nice place where you're going to be comfortable and remain for a little while as we examine and make sure that you aren't going that those memories stay that way. So you're gonna lock me up? Oh. In a technical sense, yes. In a more optimistic yeah. side, we're trying to help you. Help me? In what way is that helping me? Trust me when I say this. I don't think you really want to remember. And he stands up and uh, you hear the door opening and you see two guards walk in. At this point, the screaming is a lot more audible. It sounds like they are... Uh, it sounds like he is being... What you can only imagine from the way it sounds, it sounds like he's screaming through a cloth and coughing and hacking. You can assume he's being waterboarded. Yeah. And you see two men walk in. These guys are in, in in gear that looks akin to military gear. It's military grade. That's de that's for sure. But it's not of any it's not the United States military uniform of any of the branches. These guys are jet black. Everything that they wear is jet black. And they have a weird symbol that says TFV. And they walk in, carrying weapons you've never seen before. Come around behind you and uh, cut you loose. And they gent 
gently, quote unquote, lift you up out of your chair and walk you to your new room. <coughs> As you go, this hallway is pretty sophisticated. This place looks rather sophisticated. It's definitely a military facility of some kind. Everything is really nice and uh this place is uh, this place is uh, you can tell from the way that the doors kind of move where they're locked in the way that they're locked they slide go into a locking position and it takes an electronic lock combined with a thumbprint in order to open a door and they go through punch the number in put a put their thumbprint on and they open the door to your new cell which has your basic needs uh, small little lavatory your bed a sink and that's about it hmm. and they gently push you inside and close the door the only light that you have is the light that comes through the small little uh, eye slot that's in the door So everything's dark? Everything else is dark. Pitch black. Okay. So is it too dark to see what's around me then in the room? Yeah, it's really, really dark. At least not until your eyes uh, get accustomed to the dark. At which point you hear mm -hmm. those bootsteps again, and you see him look in from the uh, lie slot... You still can't see his face. And he says, If you cooperate with us, we'll do our best to make sure that we get you out of here as fast as possible. Or, you'll break. And you will be, well, regarded as insane. Oh. I'll let you decide how quick this is going to be. At which point he closes the eye slot and all you can hear now is the echoing screams of Jacob. Obviously he's coming from the next room over. Go ahead and make a f uh, go ahead and figure out what you want to do. Any suggestions? Well, <coughs> I guess, uh, feel my way over to the wall, assist the Jacob. Uh huh. Um, and try and see if I can hear anything through the wall. Make a perception check. <coughs> oh, a ten. You can hear them. They're still torturing him. Um, you don't know how long it's how long it goes. You have no sense of time anymore. They've taken away everything uh, except the clothes on your back. Check my pockets. You can. Right in my pocket. You don't find anything in your pockets. Anything that could have been 
anything that was, well, well, anything aside from your clothes was confiscated. I guess peer around the room, see if I if my eyes have adjusted enough that I can see anything around me. You can see a little bit around you from the dim light. You do notice where your cot is, where the sink is, and where the uh, where the toilet is. But the room is fairly cramped, very small. Not enough room to really do anything. And because it's completely okay. dark, your senses of uh, hearing are improved a bit more than well than I imagine that you'd like. I guess I would take a deep breath, um, go over to the sink, and splash some cold water on my face. Try to stay calm. Okay. You managed to calm yourself down a little bit. You think about everything that has happened. You suddenly pause to wonder, how long have I been here? You look up in the you look up in the small mirror. Your eyes have adjusted well enough to the light at this point to where you can see pretty clearly. And you look up at the mirror and notice your clothes have changed. Your hair's longer. Very uh ratty looking. You're not sure how long you've been here at this point. You hear a knock on the door and you just walk over, like you've done this a lot, a, a, for a good amount of time. And you see them slide food in. And then, you're sitting on your bed again. Looking around this room that you've become so familiar with. You've been in this room for so long, it seems, that you could tell uh, what areas of the cement were a little bit newer than which ones weren't. You aren't entirely sure of how long you've been here anymore. You stop counting. You stop caring. There's some scratchings on the wall, it looks like. What they mean, you have no idea. And then you hear another knock on the door. Something feels off, though. It's not time yet. They're not supposed to be here. You hear the sound of the eye slot being opened, but no light comes in. Except for two glowing dots. Oh. Um. Oh no. Shit. You hear someone on the other side of the door whispering in a raspy voice, Hey! 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 Stop! Oh my hey, you. god! Yeah, you! Come here! Come here! Come on! <laughs> oh my Over god. here! Come on! I'm pretty unsure about this. I mean, I get up, but <coughs> I like I'd, I'd rather keep my distance from the door. I mean, this is out of the norm, and it's she just you can tell it's a woman now from the sound of her voice, or a very young boy. You can't tell anymore. Who cares? What happens outside that door, it's none of your business. Why do you care? And she says, No, no, you have to come next to the door. Come on. 
do it or you're gay. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't be gay. <laughs> be the biggest homo. Come on, come on. I've got a surprise. It's a great surprise, I promise you. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Just come closer. Do a thing. You move towards the door slowly, cautiously, until finally you're standing at the front of the door and you see the little food slot open up. And you see her slide in something. It's a small rectangle of some kind. Chocolate. <laughs> you pick it up. It feels, it feels like metal, and then the front of it is a little glossy, and then it lights up. That light freaks you out. You haven't seen light in so long. You almost forgot you could read, and then you look at it, and you realize I've been in here for. Two days, and then the memories start coming back, rapid fire. You remember when you first got in that cell, something weird started happening. The more you listened to the screaming, the more entranced you became. Until eventually, you just began to you you felt lightheaded again, but not in the same way. Now it felt invasive. It felt like something was reaching into your mind and taking you out. You feel you felt like you were being removed from your body. And then a man walked into your uh walked into your cell and they gave you they gave you a change of clothes and they talked to you, but the things that they said you just listened to everything they said. They never, you never argued with it. You just, it made sense. Of course, yes, of course. I, I'm going to make sure that I don't try and do anything uh, to rebel. I'm going to make sure that uh, I, they promised me they'd give me three three meals a day. Uh, that sounds fair. That sounds perfectly fine. Um. And you know they also gave over the course of the two days he visits, he talks to you a little bit more, and you feel calm when he talks, but you don't really hear him. You hear this weird sound of a bell in the back of your mind, and it just rings there, and then you just forget about everything. No need to worry about trivial things like memories name who I am that's all so trivial all you need to do is worry about you know sitting in this cell not starting any problems and he'll give me food that's good that's important eating is important And then you see down in the little food slot as the memories kind of come back, you look down and you see the two little glowing eyes there, down there instead. She says, hey, mm. hey, hey, I told you you'd like it. I told you you'd like it. And she looks around for a bit. And then she holds her hand out. She says, give it back. I don't know if I want to give it back. I mean, the light is comforting. Come on, come on, come on. Give it back. Give it back. I guess I bend down and ask her who she is. She looks around, back and forth. An old acquaintance. But you won't remember me. Not yet. Soon. Soon you'll remember. Just give it back. Come on. Give it back. 
Mm. Why, why is everybody referring to <coughs> guys? I'm just sitting there confused. Like, why the hell do people keep talking to me about shit I don't understand? If you remember, this lady here. If you remembered, it would all make sense. But you can't remember yet. They stole that from you. I know where they hid it, but you gotta trust me. You gotta give it back. It's part of the deal. What deal? The deal I made with you. But you gotta give me that back first. Come on, come on. She reaches her hand into the whole, into the slot again and holds her hand out, waiting for you to give it back. I guess I regretfully hand it back. She takes it. And then you hear the eye slot and the food slot close. Uh, call out. Are you still there? No answer. Just stand there staring at the door and then... Go over and sit on my bed again. I wonder, like, what the hell happened? Have I been drugged or something? Or brainwashed? Or, like, what, what the hell is this shit? And then, you notice the door looks like blood is coming through. But it's just. Huh? But for a, mo for a moment, it looks like that. But then you realize, no, that's light. It's a red light. And then you hear sirens. Loud. Migraine inducing sirens. It's too loud. You hear gunshots. You hear yelling. And then suddenly, you see your door being pried open. Wait, is there, a, is there a table or something that I can pick up? Nope. Nothing in here that you can remove. It's part of being in jail. A pillow, maybe? They didn't give you a pillow. You think you deserved a pillow? Oh. <laughs> okay, um... Press you... up against the wall. I want to get away from that door. For the last two days, you'd been treated like nothing more than an animal. You really think they'd give you a pillow? So you press up against the wall, you're panicked, you're scared, and you see the door being flung open. And there, you see Jax. Jacob. Yay! Whatever his name is. Return uh, of the terrorist. The terrorist. Yes, I would say... In the Jacob, what the hell? What the hell is going on? He says, look, I'm going to get you out of this mess, but you got to come with me. We need to move fast. This this break is not going to last long. And then you hear something that sounds unearthly. It sounds like a monster of some kind. Some giant beast down the hallway. And he looks over and begins firing shots and says, You need to come now. Okay, I don't want to deal with that shit. Okay, I follow him. Like, I, that's scary. You go running out the door and when you turn left, you see something that you'll never forget is the sight of this giant abomination of a beast. It's not even... There's no explanation for why such a thing could possibly exist. It is this horrible mash of bodies. Arm, oh. legs sticking out, blood gouting as it moves, and it grabs a soldier. You could see it grabbing him and melding into... melding that man into its mass. And you, thing. you see it turn over, and you see it turn over. All the heads have collected at the front. They all look in your direction, eyes already rolled back, and they all open their maws and begin to scream. And you see Jacob grab your hand, and he just takes off down the, the other direction. When you look back, there are 
throughout the series of the next few minutes, you really, every single time you look back, you regret it. And you try not to look back as it drags its way forward with an unearthly speed through the hallway <laughs> chasing after you. And every single time it runs over a soldier, it grabs him and consumes him. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It is the thing. Until finally, Jacob kicks down a door, bolts out of it, and you just see the thing hit the wall, causing the entire wall to push forward just a little bit. As it reaches out with far too many arms trying to grab at you. And you feel one grab at your... You feel one grab your hair. And begins to pull you back. You can already... You almost can feel as one hand is reaching a little too close to your face as it's about to meld in with your flesh. Uh, by the way... You need to make a roll. You need to roll your dexterity and athletics to get your head away from that fucking hand. Okay, so in dexterity and athletics, so that's Yes. Four? That is correct. Ooh, nice. Okay. Oh, another okay. test. Okay. It also seems that you have athletics dodge. Wanna use it? Which is actually, I think, what I have factored, uh, what I basically allowed to be factored in. Let me double check and make sure it's... Athletics. No. Merits? Where are the merits at? Come on. No. No. Max, you need to start getting those post-it tab thingies. I really do. Oh uh, yeah, I don't think, I don't think a lot of us have used our merits. Merits yeah, are think... merits are a lot more flavor than anything else, but when they come into play, they're very very useful. Athletics dodge is not yeah. in this book, as I as I recall. That's okay. We'll just yeah, go ahead and act good. like it's there. Uh, basically, that was the athletics dodge itself. Was you get to factor in your athletics into dodging. Uh, I'll look into it later and I'll get back to you. Now, that being okay. said, you did make two successes. You you move your head and let it... You can, out of fear and pure adrenaline, you force yourself out of its grasp from your, from your hair. Unfortunately, it does take a good chunk with it, but it's a lot better than the alternative. And you see Jax continuing to run. He's running straight for the door. And without looking, perhaps this, you realize that he's a little too calm for this situation. Like this is just another calculation that he made. You see him firing a shot to his right, firing a shot to his left, and shooting once forward. You see one soldier on the right take a shot to the chest, one soldier on the left take a shot to the head, and you see the the window in front of you crack from the from being shot as you both dive through. He keeps running. This place, you are realizing kind of where you are. You're back in Los Angeles again. And at this point, um... He ducks into an alleyway and move and pushes you behind a dumpster where he hides himself and throws garbage bags over the both of you. And he just he just says, Don't say anything. Don't say anything. After several moments you hear a lot of guards passing by, a lot of a lot of movement. You hear a lot of movement going towards the building. And then you hear what sound like cannons being shot into the building. Oh, shit. Not just any cannons. It feels like the air has been... When they fire, it feels like air is being pulled in, set on fire far too fast. 
and then fired out with the force of a missile. And you hear it being shot rapidly. Until eventually you hear that horrible, wretched scream of almost 70 dead people go silent. And they keep firing. This goes on for many minutes until finally you hear fire trucks, you hear ambulances, and that's when Jax moves off, grabs you by the hand again, and you keep going. You don't know how long you've been running. All you know is just got to keep running, got to keep up, and every time you slowed down, he would pick you up himself and keep going. Until finally, you guys find yourselves in a... You guys find yourselves near the outskirts of Los Angeles. Um, make a perception check on him. Alright. You're a little too shocked at everything that you just saw. What the fuck was that thing? What have I been going through over the past two days? You you are so panicked and confused that you hardly notice that um, how many uh, things are kind of stuck in Jack in uh, Jacob's body. Uh, his leg has a has several nails sticking out of it. Um, his left hand looks broken. Uh, his face is barely recognizable behind the bruises and the swelling. Um, Jesus Christ. But he, he tries to keep... He tries to uh, not let you see that part of his face. And he kind of turns his head a little bit towards you and says, Are you alright? I'm, I'm fine. Are you okay? You, you look hurt. We need to find somewhere to rest. We don't have screaming. time for that. We don't have time for that. She'll be here soon. We're gonna oh. get you to a safe place. What's going on? Do you I'll mean, explain like... everything to you when we get back. And I'm sorry that you get got involved. Where? When we get to a safe house. You see a car drive up. And out steps a very familiar woman. She steps out of the vehicle, and when she talks, once again, your head turns towards her, but not in the same fascination that you had before. Now you could feel as if... Almost like your attention has had its cheek uh, cupped and turned. And you just have to look. And it's not a very pleasant feeling. And she says, I'm glad to see you made it out, Jax. Hello again, Miss Sabrina. Allow me to properly introduce myself. My name is Alron, representative of the Cardian Conspiracy. Please, step inside the vehicle. We'll explain everything to you as we take you to a safer place. We don't have much time, as we will be pursued very shortly. At this point, Jax kind of catches breath and he stumbles up and moves to the car. <laughs> what do you do? You don't think that Jax is in any shape to chase you down, and Alron is. She doesn't look like someone who would get, who would chase you down either. But they invite you into the vehicle. I I back away. I I look around. Where, like, what choices do I have? Like, where can I run? You can run down into the, uh... You can run back into the city. You can run down the path that goes down towards the, uh... Down towards the, uh... Enormous... Uh, what is it? What do they call them? 
the uh, where rain kind of gathers up and is pushed out to and is moved out to sea. Storm drain. Storm like a storm drain, except much much bigger. One of those things that goes on like it's that, big enough to maybe. have a yeah, it's big enough to have a bridge go over it. You could go running down that way, and uh, that's an option. You could just run across the bridge. Once again, Malron seems to be inviting you. And then you see Jax, and he just, he is so done. He just sits down in the chair. Done. <laughs> 110% done. And then you hear him say, uh, from, from his seat in the car, and says, Sabrina, there are a lot of things to explain. If you want to know what happened, Get in the car. Well, they're obviously not who they said they were, but it seems like everything that's going on is connected with things that I don't know about, or maybe I did and I, I don't remember. I need to find out what is what happened you get in the car and uh, the car. I need to... all Ron closes the door behind you and sits down in her seat she seems once again these two appear too calm where Jax is a lot more on the uh, like you see his entire demeanor change the Jacob that you knew was always very calm very kind very considerate. He was always very patient with you. But you, you know, for the longest time, you began to realize that he's always been very, he almost seemed sad every time he saw you. Like, there was a deep guilt that, that rests on his heart that made him that way. And for the first time, you just, you just hear him start swearing. This is the guy that never swore before either. He'd never swore in front of you. And now he's swearing up a storm. He's using words you don't even know. <laughs> as he pulls out nails from his and from his you're leg. A writer. You're pretty sure he's making some of them up. He's so pissed off right now. And Alron kinda just sits there, lets him have his little tantrum and says, uh, just remember you're an ace, please. Do show some consideration. We have a guest in the vehicle. <laughs> As she checks the rear view mirror, checks the left mirror, checks the right mirror, make sure everybody's wearing their seatbelt, and when she asks Jax to put on his seatbelt, he just says, Fuck off! <laughs> I'm a little busy right now. As he cuts... <laughs> he actually takes the seatbelt, cuts it, and uses it to... Uh, uses it to... as a bandage. He says, there, I put on my fucking bit. I fucking put on my seatbelt. <laughs> like, he looks at her. He's he's righteously pissed off right now. He looks at her and just says, Look, I put my seatbelt on as he points at his leg. <laughs> Can we fucking go now before they catch up? And he looks back and says, Really? Come on, go. And she says, Okay, okay. And then she steps on the gas and pleasantly takes off across the bridge. As you look back and see that there are now three vehicles chasing you with really weird looking things on the back. The fuck? They look like oh, fucking it's... laser cannons. <laughs> <laughs> you realize they are You realize they are fucking laser cannons as they fire and you just see this bright flash of light hit the bridge and take out a, like an entire part of the road. God. And this whole time, Alron is just calm while Jax is now freaking the hell out. He's <laughs> demanding her to go faster and trying to, like, force her to move faster, but she's just, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Come, come on. We can't go faster than the speed limit. We're going to break the oh law, and we can't afford to break the law again, Jax. That would be the third time this week.
you look back and you're now you're you're now freaking out about the fact that she's so calm about this but then you notice uh, you notice that as soon as she crosses the bridge you look to the left you look to the right and you see that there are a lot more vehicles filled with people who are wearing suits and as those three cars come across you see two guy you see two guys swing around to look down the bridge and they fire uh, they fire what you can what you've seen in movies before is a javelin rocket launcher God. goes taking off straight for the vehicle pops straight up and then descends upon both of on all three of the vehicles and you just watch as there once were three cars and about 12 people on that bridge there's not very much bridge left. <laughs> and you're not sure where the cars are. It's like a Die Hard movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, then you see the vehicle, everyone steps back into the vehicles and continues driving behind your, your car. And Alron says, look, it's been taken care of, okay? And Jax, for the first time, just rests, relax a little bit and says, alright, just get us to the fucking safe house. We'll... <sighs> We got a lot to talk about, Sabrina. You get back to a building. <laughs> so you ask, like, that's the first question that comes out of your mouth is, who the fuck was that? Who's been chasing us? What do they want? And Jack's just, you know, he's not, he's not putting up so well with the yelling, and he says, he just. But he seems to be restraining himself a little bit, and he says, Those assholes are Task Force Valkyrie. And what does that what? mean? What is that? Task Force that Valkyrie means. is like... If you take all the war criminals, rejects, and assholes that came from the military, CIA, and the FBI, put them on steroids and had them hunt monsters all fucking day, that's Task Force Valkyrie. <laughs> monsters? What do you mean monsters? You saw that big ass... Uh, I don't know if you noticed the giant fucking thing that was chasing us down the goddamned hallway, but uh, <laughs> that's kind of stuff that they hunt. That's kind of stuff that we hunt, too. That's why you are the way that you are. Because you had an accidental you... run-in with a supernatural occurrence. What are you talking about? He almost looks like he wished he hadn't said that. And he, sit, he just kind of looks forward and says, Look, sorry. Lost my temper. Okay. I've had a bit of a rough two days. Task Force Valkyrie is a government agency that is tailor-made to hunt supernaturals of all kinds. They carry weapons that no other military that we know of has in their armory. And all of those weapons are tailor-made, once again, to hunt monsters. Really big monsters. Those are the guys that are chasing us. And they said that you're a criminal, is that true? That depends on your definition of the word criminal. Why are they interested in you? Why are you... Why were you interested in me? What? I mean, I'm just a writer. Why have you been helping me this entire time? He says... He gives a sigh. A long sigh. And he just says, Wait till we get to the safe house. And it'll all make sense. I promise. I'll have everything explained to you. Not gonna hide anything anymore. I'll tell you everything. What's the safe house? Is it like the place we just left? Or are you just gonna lock it up? No. 
We're going there I'm to give you an explanation. There. And if you want to leave, you can go. But I think after you hear the explanation, you might want to consider staying. You drive, you drive in silence for a long time, and at this point, Alron seems to notice the very awkward silence, and at this point, I guess you can go ahead and make a, make an attempt to figure out what's wrong with her, because there's something very off about her mannerisms. Go ahead and make a uh, wits and empathy check. Mm-hmm. Since you have no dots um, in empathy, I assume, um, that's minus one, so you have two dots to roll from your wits. Two. 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 Uh, no, McDonald's, they sell, dr- they sell dead people to drugs. Cloudy, you... Um, I'll give this one to you just because it's it's a small almost irrelevant note you notice that her mannerisms almost seem like she doesn't understand emotions like she played like she is very pleasant overall but she's always pleasant it seems she just doesn't understand what's going on with people Mm. or the fact that both of you are panicked you're exhausted, you're upset. She just doesn't seem to notice, and she turns the radio on to some horrible pop music channel. She says, oh! I'm sure (laughs) I'm sure this will cheer everybody up. And it just plays the most depressing song you've heard ever heard in your life. You just hear the song Why Did It Why Did This Happen to Me? Why did this happen to me? I made my mistakes. And you just, she just doesn't seem to get it. She just kind of sits there and plays the music. And then, after noticing that no one's having a reaction to it, she turns it up louder. <laughs> God damn it. And you drive. I guess. You drive for far too long down the road until finally Jax just, he takes the pistol he has and shoots the fucking radio. <laughs> and Alron says, oh, really? Now we have to replace that too. The boss is going to be so displeased at your recklessness with carding equipment. And he says, I don't give a flying fuck. I will pay for it later. Just get us the safe house in quiet. And eventually you make it to this apartment looking place. You see... Alron walk up and she puts a card inside of the uh, little mail slot and you hear the door open you see a little girl she couldn't be older than 12 a little Japanese looking girl she opens up the door um, and you see the three shotguns that are aimed at the door Jax walks out and he gets inside of the house where he kind of just finds a nice place to sit down in the living room covered in the newspapers and just slumps down. Um, At this point, you walk in and you see there are a lot of people that live here. A lot of strange looking people of all kinds. There's a there's a fucking giant hobo for crying out loud. <laughs> and you also see Noel. Noel. 
you go into the room where Jax is sitting and he says, uh, he closes like the door and says, everybody else, get out of here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I need to fucking talk to her. Grab the charger from my laptop and I hit my head on the corner. Aww. That was like me getting in my car bit. I went backwards Dang. and slammed the back of my head against the car. Oh. oh God. It fucking hurt. Oh. <laughs> it still hurts. Okay, um, so Cloudy, at this point, he kind of just surrenders and says, Alright, just any questions you have, I'll answer them for you. You want the answer to life? Well,. The answer's not 42, I'll tell you that much. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, that's funny. Okay. And you begin to realize he's a total jackass. <laughs> like, complete personality difference. I'm just kidding. Complete personality <laughs> difference. Polar opposite at this what? point. <laughs> what happened during my accident? They kept asking me. I don't remember what happened. You wouldn't remember because, well, you were brainwashed then too. What? Is that what happened to me Shut back the in the building? Yes. Back when those guys locked me up? Yes. Why was I brainwashed? Because you saw things that you weren't supposed to see. Put simply, you saw... Uh, he he just sighs and reaches over and grabs one of the files, digs through it, throws it, with much to uh, several of the other people in the building, much to their great discontent. As he just kind of throws papers around and says, where the fuck is it? It's around here somewhere. Like, God damn it, man. Stop throwing the fucking paper. He says, whatever. I'm your boss. You're going to clean it up after me. Oh, Fuck you! <laughs> you. Whatever, you're fucking 12 years old. Why are you using those words? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shots fired. And he um, finally finds a picture. What you see in the picture is... Completely unbelievable. There's your car. There's you being taken away by people in suits. And then there are pictures of some creature. Very different from the one that you already encountered. This one being... Um, this one... Was... Put simply, it was a really, really big spider. Oh. What? Spiders yeah. are not to be trusted. We're talking about a house-sized spider. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> right. then... Upon closer inspection, you see that the spider seems to have seems to have been collecting skulls some of them in the process of rotting and it adorns its abdomen with them like war trophies Jesus, it's metal. considering it is a house sized spider and its abdomen was completely covered you can imagine the death toll you also see the a man wearing the the TSV seal. And you see someone who looks kind of like Jax. In one of the pictures as they are talking about something looking over the giant spider. Several more pictures show many other people who were in the vicinity who were not as lucky as you. All of them had had their insides completely drained. 
their husks and their heads removed. They didn't even have to be put in webs. Just completely drain dry. The skin is literally uh, clinging to clinging to the bones. It's hot. It's hot. What the fuck said that? <laughs> Among them, you see men, women, children, animals. <gasps> No, oh, not the animals. Not the animals. That's uh, not the animals. Uh, the not the not children. The animals. Police officers who came to try and help. Locals carrying their weapons with large puncture wounds in their chests. Um, he said, on that day, something big ended up coming out of out of a place we call the hedge. We'll explain that another time. Oh God! I this thing crept out, got into the area, and had been killing people for the last. At the time of the picture was taken, the last twenty years, it's been harvesting Jeez. people. We only recently discovered it. Spider. And we worked a we worked a joint operation with Task Force Valkyrie. The man that you see in the picture was in charge of the facility we were just at. I wouldn't be surprised if he was the one who interrogated you. And now you can finally see his face. And, he's, and Jack says, We've been watching over you for a very long time since your parents' death. Your parents... He looks over and kind of, he looks at Alron specifically, and uh, she kind of seems to be alright with it, whatever he's about to say. And he finally says, your parents, um, the reason why they aren't around is because they saved my life when I was a kid. They worked with, they worked with, uh, our boss, Sachi, and the day they rescued me is the day they died. They're saving me from, uh, he looks over at Alron and says, saving me from her. What? Question mark? <laughs> Hey, Pasa. Okay, it's problema. Um, <laughs> and you look at Alron. And in her usual, completely uh, emotionally deaf way, says, events led to their unfortunate demise. And for that, I'm sorry. But we moved you into my parents. Not of my own volition. I was not uh, in control of myself at the time. And Jack says, "She's right. At the time, she was a." He looks back at her. He seems to be a little careful about the word. She was, uh, a lot less human. Um, and under the control of a person that we have come to call Raven Mirage. Um, she is extremely dangerous. Your parents had been hunting her alongside Sachi for a very, very long time. Um, and then he pulls a picture up, and you see those two glowing eyes again. In that picture. And, you know, he keeps talking about how dangerous this person is, but you don't hear it as you look at the picture and see that those eyes are kind of, they look, they almost look like they're staring at you in that picture. And you hear, you feel like someone's tapping on the back of your skull. 
like the annoying horrible tapping and then you just hear someone say I told you I'd get you out of there you're welcome <laughs> we'll meet again real soon so you can pay me back and what? then that's how um, that's sadly how uh, your parents die. They, I owe them everything, and that's why when your grandmother died, um, I went to make sure that everything was going to be all right with you, and make sure that you were taken care of. Uh, and when you ran into that. When you ran into that hedge beast um, and lost all your memories, I I felt I had to make sure that you would be okay. So uh, that's why I've been sticking around with you all these years as uh, Jacob. But um, I lost my real name a long time ago. My name's Jax now, and that's all you need to know me as. If you have any more questions, I'm, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Wait, what did you say about my grandma? I the uh, the connection is lost for a second. Your your grandmother, she was well. They, the, the reports will say that she died of heart arrest, but uh, the true the truth is that she saw something that had been set loose on the local neighborhood. Um, the reason why there was a closed coffin burial was because your grandmother was killed by something called the hook. No way. Your grandmother's body was unrecognizable. Wait. The hook, what's that? It's another it's another creature from the hedge. A monster Child born, to our knowledge, it is a monster born of pure fear. God. We don't know how to kill it. Every time we put it down, it comes back. Unfortunately, it managed to find your grandmother. We were just lucky enough to be able to get there to save you. And we're sorry about your grandma. Uh, you see a folder that he's holding, but he ref he's not. He doesn't look like he wants to give it to you, and he just puts it down. What's in the folder? Pictures of that incident. I don't think you want to see. Pictures of what? Pictures of the incident uh, with the hook and uh, Sabrina's Shoot. grandmother. <laughs> I, I want to know what happened. He pauses for a while before he slowly hands it to you. I promised I'd tell you everything, so here you go. Use you the folder, and the first picture that you see is... Uh, at first it looks like... It looks something like what you'd see at a grocery store when you go to the uh, uh, when you go and purchase uh, meat. Oh God! Oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> Except you realize it. It looks the picture looks like a picture of put simply um, ground beef. Oh. And then you Why realize that you that was. Her legs. No. 
Oh, and it's all fucking... it's all hanging from her body like ribbons as she's hung uh, she is connected to the ceiling by the hook Vance how the fuck are you still alive which is punching through the bottom of her jaw and past the top of her skull and she hu- and she hangs there I had I'd probably close the folder pretty quickly at that point. (laughs) And he says, the reason why you couldn't remember is because of the trauma. That was the first time you had amnesia. The second was after you saw the giant spider. I know the boss is going to want to speak to you at some point. But, um, if you want to turn away now, you can, you can leave and try to live as normal a life as you can, but I don't know if that's ever going to be possible. What about those people? Aren't, aren't they still after us? They will if be. If I leave here... They'll come find you. Why Why are they after me? They are of a different belief uh, than us. What it's my fault think? that you got involved. If I had been more careful, they wouldn't know. But the Cardians, the group that I'm with, we are known by them as a, as a criminal syndicate they have cast their judgment on us and treat us like uh, we are uh, crooks and hunt us down all the same as they would anybody, any of the monsters that they chase down and they want me because I was with you Yes, and also that because way? you survived the the incident with the spider. Uh, they don't want that getting out because that was their mess up. Then why didn't they just kill me? Why were they holding me in a cell? They have some humanity left in them. They don't want questions being asked. When you kill someone and make them disappear, questions get asked. And when questions get asked, more people have to die. Easiest solution, brainwash, send them back out into the city. <laughs> So, they brainwashed me after Jackson? Yeah, uh, no. No. We got a hold of you that time. You just couldn't remember. What can you tell me about Raven? We know only that we've been hunting her for a very, very long time. We don't ever really understand her reasons for doing anything. But she's extremely dangerous. Not herself. Not she herself. She isn't. On her own, she is not a very big threat. The issue is what comes after you see her. There are. There are rumors that she is a uh, she's something like a like the among supernaturals they say that she is a harbinger an omen uh something that when it shows up when she shows up you can expect everything to go wrong if you see her your life is about to take a turn for the worse if you get if you catch her interest you're pretty much knocking on death's door and your life will never be the same again. Okay. 
Sometimes she helps people. Sometimes she ruins their lives. And you don't know why we can't she explain does what she does? No. We can't hope to understand uh, what goes through her head. She's fucking insane. She was also uh, Alron's keeper for a good long time. A keeper? She abducts children and then uses them for whatever nefarious purposes she could want. And when they escape, she just lets them try to make sense of their lives, even though everything they've ever known is completely ruined. Alron here was uh, abducted back in the 19th, but he looks back at her. She says, oh, I believe it was 1923. When we found Alron, she was a part of her garden. She just kept her around as a uh, as a plant and all run attacked because that's what she was supposed to do she was a guard and when we finally destroyed the plant we found her inside and uh, she begged us to help we couldn't say no look uh, I, I know I'm going a little too deep in but all you need to know is we are we're not we do criminal activities I won't lie and I won't pretend that those things don't happen but we do it to make money so that we can fund our hunt so that we can protect people like your mother and father did so that things like what happened to your grandmother don't happen to someone else's family So yes, we sell drugs, we take on assassination jobs, we, we, we underplay the market, we do everything any mafia would do to make money. But the reasons we do are different. So if you want to turn your back on this now and try to live your life as normal as you can before Task Force Valkyrie gets comes knocking on your door and finds you you can walk out now but anybody might be putting other people in danger by doing that you would can I do about it? I can't just keep running from them. Turn yourself in and let them brainwash you again. Although at this point I think execution is kind of what they do. So either way I am screwed. Yeah. That monster in the building, why was it there? Task Force Valkyrie likes to keep its monsters like some kind of prize. It got out somehow. I don't know how, but it was a lucky break. I managed to bust open the... I managed to uh, kill the guards and bust out of the door when the uh, warning sirens went off. And then I got to your your room and... Why didn't you just leave me there? What... 
what do I have to live for at this point? They want me dead. But I don't want you dead. He loves you. <laughs> That's all that mattered to me was making sure I returned the favor to your parents. The Cardians, I won't lie, the things that you're going to be fighting are going to challenge everything that you've done in your life, spit upon everything that you've ever done, make a mockery of life itself. But we can help you, and help you get your life back as best we can. Wow. Well, we are a criminal syndicate after all. We have ways of doing a lot of things. If you join us, you'll have a place to stay, you'll have money. What would you ask of me? To do what you can for us. That means fighting. And then he looks over at the others who are in the building, namely the rest of the World of Darkness group. You can help these guys as best you can in any way you can. You've got great perception. You can notice things and help point things out that they might miss. Help them in their investigation, in their hunt. All we ask is that you help us by helping protect other people using whatever skills that you can. I don't really have any other choice, do I? You do. You always have a choice. At this point, you hear the door open and you see... see a woman who is... She's got uh, jet black hair. She's wearing sunglasses. She steps in. And she looks at Jax to a degree almost you're not sure if there's sympathy or anything really she just looks at him and she looks at you and she just says you have a lot of choices a lot of them could be very dumb what we promise is not a life filled with luxury. It's a life that you'll have to earn. But if you help us, we will return the favor and try to help you. But you do have right. the choice to leave. And if you leave, well, as much as I owe to your parents, I can't protect you from Task Force Valkyrie if you've made the decision to go back out there. But if you stay, you'll be one of us, and we protect our own. Alright, I'll do what I need to do. You see her reach into her pocket and pull out a card and throws it to you. And you see a two of spades on the card. Oh yeah. And she <laughs> says Good. Hope you don't have anything useful at your house. You ain't going back. 
she turns around and closes the door. At which point you see Hotaru come running up and then she puts the line of salt down and then rearms the trap. There we go. I've read this for cat. Alright, and that is your introduction into the group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sabrina Step. You have two spades. Robin, what the hell? <laughs> two old spades. And you look back at that picture, and all you can remember is the words that you just heard from Raven. I'll come back to get that promise. To make that deal happen. What did I miss? What did I promise her? You gotta pay me back. Guess you'll find out. Tran. Tran. And the words that will ring forever with your character is favor for favor. Dang. Damn, sir. God damn it, Raven, you Bigly bitch. dang. And that's when you have to ask yourself, was it really worth being saved by Raven? Probably not.